What is up everybody, it's back here and today we're back with another Doki Doki Fallen Angel mod video. If you didn't know guys, this is a mod. If you weren't listening when I first said it was a mod, just leave me alone, okay? So if you don't know what this mod is, this is all about Yuri. Yes, just Yuri. After this, we've got a Natsuki mod as well. It's called Exit Music. Apparently that's really good. But you gotta wait for this to finish, okay? You gotta wait for this. Just go, go be patient, guys. If you didn't see the last video, go check it out. There'll be a little icon in the top right hand of the screen. So, whom should I share my poem with first? Well, um, Yuri, I guess. Yuri's probably the most experienced, so I can trust that she'll give honest feedback. Also, she's the girl I'm trying to impress, anyway, so it only makes sense to talk to her first. I walk up to Yuri and I hand her my poem. This is my poem. Oh, okay. So this was supposed to be about horror, if I get it correct. The silence of the night. I lay, eyes closing, drifting out of consciousness. Thoughts fester and plague my mind. My imagination plays trick on, tricks on me as the deafening silence pounds my eardrums. But the fragile silence is broken by the sound of a voice. A sweet, sweet voice of a woman bidding me goodnight. I breathe in and out as my eyes close again. I lay in my cage and my blankets. I feel as if I'm in a dream, I can feel the awe of another person next to me. I'm captivated by the voice of my door bidding me goodnight until I realise I live alone. My heartbeat is unstable as my eyes explode open, the deafening silence returns, and as my eyes slowly drift out of consciousness again. Oh, oh, okay. Phenomenal. What is that? Idiot, this poem is fascinating. The dark tone, the eerie ambience you've created is very unsettling. No, not in a bad way though. Did, did I raise my voice? I, I'm sorry. Damn it, I was actually getting somewhere. Oh, right, idiot, fix this. Hey, it's alright, I didn't even notice. Please continue, you seem really interested in my poem. Ah, yes, I like, like I was saying, it's very dark and chilling pieces really evokes emotion. Question for you, idiot. How much experience do you have with Ryan? Your use of metaphors and the way you pull the reader into your uh, piece is peace, that is peace, not peace. I'm so stupid. It's fascinating. Really? Thanks you, that means a lot coming from you. To be honest, that was actually my first time writing poetry. Eh? I, I knew that. I could tell by... You chasing the thing got along with the poem, dissecting it down further. She's trying to find something wrong with it. Yes, here's how I was able to tell. A common mistake I see in new writers is that they try to make their writing too deliberate. They usually try to focus on one or two different topics or styles and they try to form it and fit together. The end result is both the writing and the meaning of the piece are weakened. Once Yuri gets her thoughts together, she appears to have a whole different person. Of course, that's not saying you can be blamed for. That's good advice, Yuri. I'll definitely consider that next time. I'm sure you'll improve nicely. Metaphors can go a long way in Ryan. I, I have an example of that, if you would like to read it. Of course. Yuri smiles at this rare opportunity for her. I think that in itself is funny. I mean, isn't this a literature club after all? Yuri hands me a poem. Uh, this is the normal poem. Okay, so we'll just skip that. I, I'm sorry, I'm such a terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't feeling that at all, but it took you so long time to read. I, I probably shouldn't tell you I don't know how to read cursive. Yeah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is very pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. So you shouldn't matter, right? Right. I'm... I'm I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to dige digest, digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all, idiot. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. Remember, poets often express their own thoughts and feelings and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of a poem has only been symbo uh, symbolically compared to a ghost. Sorry, I can't speak English. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it in that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's really impressive, Yuri. Eh? Yeah? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You, you think so? Yeah, of course. Ah, you know, I was really nervous about doing all of this, but in the end I enjoyed it. 
I'm gonna keep doing my best for you, idiot. Ah, me too. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. It may, okay, just remember that it won't be too long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep on trying. I'm counting on you. Phew. I mean, that's everyone. So you should be a poem, dear sunshine. I could tell she rose this morning, but I asked her. But I asked her. She avoided the question. Next, an article is showing a poem called "Jump." It was short and simple, but the message on how you could try and try, but never, but never really be, but never really be good, was very well thought out. Like, sorry, I can't speak English. I can't even read. Lastly, Monica and I shared our poems. The poem was titled "Hole in the Wall." It was pretty abstract. I didn't really understand it. Monica said it had something to do with an epiphany of hers, but she didn't go into much detail. Nevertheless, I thought it was a good poem. Glance around the room. I was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone's judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if I'd just been nice, it's, n it's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. <sighs> I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, so you and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes are on Yuri and Natsuki. They, they're gingerly ex- they gingerly- What's that? Is that gingerly? Never heard that being said. They, okay, they exchange sheets of paper, share their respective poems. So read in tandem, I watch how their expressions change. Now see the eyebrows, furrow, and frustration. You know, Yui smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, n it's nothing. Nasi dismissively returns her poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I'm trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that harder kind of something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, if I could, if I, if I could give you a few small criti critics. Hmm. What? It's not edgy enough for your taste, Yuri? What's that supposed to mean? If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Idiot did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which yours definitely wasn't. <clears throat> And Idiot liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Nasi suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you're so invested in trying to impress on you. Remember, Yuri? Eh? I can hear the sorry, the music's quieter, so you can hear my voice more. But this is the crazy music, okay? That's not what. You, you're just. You stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Idiot appreciates my voice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know you didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I wouldn't deliberately go my way to make everything I do obviously cutesy. Ew! Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as the idiots started showing up. N nasty Um, nasty that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I don't like fire, guys! Suddenly both girls turn towards me and they notice that I was standing there. Idiot. She She's trying to just make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. She could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective. And this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all con con convoluted for no reason? I definitely knew what they were talking about then. The meaning should jump out to a reader, not force them to figure it out. How do we explain that to her, idiot? W wait. There's a reason why so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey com well, convey complex feelings and meaning but most effectively. Avoiding them is only not unnecessary, limiting yourself is also a waste. You understand that right, idiot? Um, well? How do I get dragged in this first place? It's not like I know anything about Ryan. Are you really the best person to intervene in this conversation? Okay, so as you guys know, to meet Nazi's best girl. But we gotta go for Yuri, so pretend you weren't listening. That's gotta be the bad one. Attempt to defuse the situation. We're gonna attempt it. We did save. I think you're both very talented and very unique, Ryan. Boo! 
I sink back into my seat. I really need to start preparing myself for difficult questions these skills my ask. Excuse me, Natsuki, but I don't think you should have any way to talk to an idiot like, to, uh, idiot like that. You know what I think, Yuri? When I first met you, I was excited to meet someone who I thought I could share the same interests as me. But now I see that you're just some stuck up. It's no wonder you have no friends. Oh. Yuri went to the classroom wiping her eyes with her sleeves. I stared deeply at Natsuki. I see regret in her eyes. I, I should go upon. I don't think that's necessary, Natsuki. What the hell does Monica mean it's not necessary? What Natsuki said was completely out of line. I didn't mean what. I was just mad I spoke without thinking. No, no, Natsuki. You had every right. You were stepping out of line and you defended yourself. I believe what I'm hearing. How could Monica say these things? Did she just not see what I just saw? Okay, to be honest, none of that should have really been said. It was both their fault for starting that conversation, in my opinion. So, like, either way, if whatever happened. So, I know that's the bad idea. I started to walk towards the door to go find Yuri. Idiot! I was stopped cold by tracks, but Monica's tone shift in tone. Should stay here. You just need some time to... Time to herself to calm down. Something ominous by the way Monica said her, but maybe she's right. You'll come back when she's ready. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Oh, Yuri's back. It was alright, well, mostly. Iji, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. If any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with a newfound determination. Idiot! You ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent too much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, what about happened earlier? Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki, does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise that they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? Think to myself. I shouldn't judge people based on only just two days. No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, idiot, it's nice I let you spend time with you in the club. I think seeing you get along with everyone else is what makes me the happiest. I think Avon really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught in the kind of situation I'm in. Should be in friends with Avon is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? we we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. Pat say you're on my shoulder. I said that more to myself. I said that more to myself than to her. But it's easy to use Sayori as an in internal monologue sometimes. Okay, let's do this. Time to write another poem. You seem like the last one, though. She used to be fond of her using symbolic meanings in a poem. Maybe I can do something like that again to impress her. Okay, do you want me to save here? I just want to go back to that option quickly. What's happening? When I'm back in the Okay, let's just save here quickly. Now let's load the game. Load this. Now pretend you weren't. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Sing back to my. Uh. Okay, it's the exact same. Not it's the exact same outcome. But it's either you pretend to help or you don't. Okay. When I look around, everyone seems to be doing going normally. You was reading a book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hi Yuri! Oh, hey, hey Yuri! I suddenly know that Yuri is reading a different book from what we've been reading together. Turn my head to read the cover. Portrait of Mark, there it is! There's the book! Eh? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh no. I was kind of just waiting for you. If that's the case, why don't we go ahead and so get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? That sounds great, Yuri. Thanks. If there's one thing I can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Of course, oh, I'm Welsh, but I live in England, so tea, mm, tea, one sugar, and some crumpets. Cru I'm sorry, guys, but crumpets are actually amazing. If you don't like crumpets, even if you're not English, well, damn, they are good. Not to mention for yourself as well. You stands up and makes her way to a closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf. The kind of filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Wait, hang on, I've just thought something. I've actually just... Wait, what? 
Okay, guys, listen now. I actually just thought about this. Whenever she goes out to fill up the, the um, kettle or pitcher, no, yeah, kettle it is, she always has a filter in it, in the pitcher. And it's a metal one. And from that, just having, like, a pause, whenever she goes out to fill it up, she always starts cutting. So does she put the knife inside the pitcher? I've just thought about that. Or is it not, and that's just it? No, it hands you the picture and also fetches an extra cow. I'm gonna plug this into the teacher's desk and we'll get. Yeah, she goes, takes the picture. She takes the picture out with her. She takes up a filter. What's a knife? Then that's what she does. I just thought about that. Damn. Man. I'm insane. She walks past me and sets the cow down at the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. Twice or twice, the way she moves really contrasts with speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs. Zero P is elegant and. whatever that word says. Okay, may I have a water pitcher? Hand you back the water pitcher. Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you, I'm just standing here. Uh, yeah, why not? Should we go then? Oh, we're actually gonna go together. Wait, hmm, where are you off to? Eh? You and I, we were gonna get some. A sunny is a weird sound to explain this to Monica. Did you know we're gonna fill the water pitcher, Monica? Ah, okay. So I was just a bit curious. That's kind of one person job, isn't it? Oh. No, I didn't mean that, I meant, uh, blah, 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 history. That, yeah, I was about to say, she cuts us off. Monica, would you kind of remove your nose from other people's affairs? Or would you want to tell us something wrong with helping involve idiot in club activities? Or are you upset because I'm doing more to involve a new member in the club than you? <laughs> My mouth gate. Ga I, I suppose there's something wrong with her. Hmm, then let's go, idiot. Yuri quickly exits the room. I look around the room. See, say you'll dig her face deep into a book. Over the corner, Nazi receives back into a closet. Look at Monica scares me. Quickly follow Yuri out of the corridor. When in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forward against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. She's crying. No. What's wrong with me? Why would be unlikable? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Idiot. How come even when I do something bad, you're being so nice to me? Because nothing that you do is bad as if you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, uh, no, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something like as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? F friend? You say? Uh, um, you really lifts her head. Idiot. I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyways. Uh, yeah? Shall we go? Yeah. You and I walk to the nearest wall, Alan. Once we fill the picture, we turn to the classroom. As we end, I can feel the penetrant stares of the other club members. Idiot, do you like oolong tea? Uh, I, I'm not really, uh, I, I'm not, uh, god damn it. Uh, I'm not really that knowledgeable when it comes to tea, so I guess whatever is fine. Well, perhaps I can teach you sometime of the art of making tea. I should know this, I'm English, okay? I should know this. Yep, yeah, that would be a nice date, huh? <laughs> I guess I said too much. Uh, so what exactly is the first step to making a hot cup of tea? I do my best to lie in the mood. Oh, well, allow me to show you. You reset the temperature from the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do it any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I, even if I want to explore tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. You refresh the teapot and begins motion the tea leaves. To this point, she even starts humming a, little, humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed, I was doing a bit of thinking recently. I decided I would try to express myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. Whenever it's, whenever it's you who's around anyway. Ah, it's getting hot again. That's great, Yuri. Don't, just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, idiot. It's very endearing. That's, Yuri wasn't kidding. My face is probably bright red at this point. Watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Idiot, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh, hey, why is that? 
It's a little bit easier on my back. I can be my back against the wall and rather bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realise. No worries. I just have a back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Sounds so. I wonder why that is. A cut. It's mostly like because my, uh, my, my, your posture, right? Posture, <laughs> posture, everyone, posture. God's sake. Like, uh, always had drive like that while reading. Yes, I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. <laughs> I'm not even sure whether we're not talking about reading posture, but I think it's best if I just leave a conversation about. Yes, it is, idiot. Just leave it there. I'll go get the book. Retrieve a book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. In a bag of small chocolate candies I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I'd take it since it would go well with the tea. Yuri and I sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of a book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri sides are closed until our shoulders are touching. Am I supposed to focus on reading like this? I always found Yuri attractive since the moment I laid eyes on her, but. When she's been less apprehensive, I feel like my heart's about to burst. Your teacup? You hands me in my me in my teacup. Holding my hand is well not well that's not holding the book. I end up in a position where it makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her posture. Posture. Meanwhile, Yuri has to notice a single thing. She wears an intense reading expression. I can only assume the world around has faded away. I got upon every reserve of willpower I have in order focus on me. Oh god. Uh, after a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. Put the teacup between my legs and I fumble with a chocolate wrapper. Ugh. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to first open the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, oh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Yeah, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No, 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 no need to apologise. I'll hold, I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Hey, we're back to this. You open the book with both hands. Hi, Yuri. Hello, Yuri. <laughs> she holds it so we don't have any harder time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on the top of my leg. My brain is short circuiting at this point. Uh, in that case, who's already had her dragged back into a book? I take a chocolate candy and pop into my mouth. I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from a book. But since he parts the lips in the situation was completely natural. What am I supposed to do here? I can't stop now. Ah, I impressively place the chocolate in her mouth. Oh, how cute. Talk about Yui closes her lips over it. Eh? Ah, Yui's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yui looks at me and she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Idiot. So sorry. I guess I should have done that. One of these days I'll get a hold of a conversation with a girl without making a fool of myself. That's, well, you, you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. I, I see. This one, I can hear my own heart racing. You <laughs> tries to return to a book. Even I can just tell by her expression that she can't focus now. I'm too, in, too deep into the story now. Oh, deep, wait, oh, that wasn't story. I'm too deep in, I, I'm in too deep to stop now, that's what it said. I started to pace it into my mouth, then this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. Wait, what? Okay, dot dot dot. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze, and lavender eyes pierce through mine. And then her chest rise and fall into the rhythm of her breaths. I have half a chocolate stick out of my mouth. Oh my god, is this actually gonna, I feel like it was gonna happen. I, I'll lean my face towards you. So both of us in a trance. Please go even close to each other. The rest of the world is gone. It's just me and you. Oh! It's just me and you in a single moment of time. They were going to like, you know, that thing from where the hell that movie was, the Disney film, where the spaghetti, you know, like first sides. We're going to do that with the chocolates. Come on, Monica. Okay, everyone. <laughs> in my panic, I actually inhale a chocolate. Oh, God. I started to cough and control you while the others remember to stare pitifully. I gulped down the rest of Yuri's tea to wash down the chocolate. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Yeah, it's time to share poems. Idiot, you can help you put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is utterly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah, you. That's gonna be so awkward, man. Especially like all the other club members just looking. He picks up the teacups from the floor. 
Once I calm down from a near death experience, I pick up a bag of chocolates. In, in the end, we hasten to clean up without much of a word between us. I get the feeling there's something that neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Damn, it's gotta be awkward. Show and tell time! I hand you my poem. Oh, okay, we got a slight bit long. Okay, not. Okay, it's Rust in Cage. Despite bitter judgment, despite what you know, eternity is encased in a rusty cage. No one can leave, no one can be free. The finger of rust on our fingertips, like rusty spoons. It's almost the horror of the sound of rusty spoons on a rusty cage. Scraping, scraping, scrape. As contamination washes over the desolate landscape, the birds chirp and t turn the cries of men. The howling winds turn to the screams of children. The rustling leaves turn to deafening silence. Silence is all there is in a rusty cage. Except when the silence is broken by a rusty spoon. Man, we're going deep with these poems. Idiot. I really, I really hope Yuri doesn't figure out why I wrote this poem down in one go. I've no idea how to symbolise symbolism or anything. Actually, every my poem is just scrambled words put together to pretend not to have meaning. Yuri's a very precise reader. This isn't good. She's gonna put out I, <laughs> my poem. This poem is phenomenal. What nanny? If I had a guess, I was acting the poem. I can see a lot of symbolism. First glance, it may appear to avoid no idea what they're doing. <laughs> At first glance, I know idiot had no clue. She hit the nail on the head right there. But diving further into it, the way you describe a rusty cage and spoon, and the use of auto examples, idiot, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but this poem is about ADHD, right? Oh, oh, the cage represents in the mind. The rusty spoon symbolism that random thoughts are pounded in one's brain. What the? F yeah, Yuri, that's exactly what I wanted to convey when writing it. Your poem is indescribable, but in a good way. How do you manage to pick up these techniques so quickly? Uh, wiki. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. <laughs> Although I'm not sure it's nothing comparison to what you wrote. You flatter me, idiot. However, you should you shouldn't cut yourself short. With more practice, you'll be able to display it to your reader with more most inner thoughts. I don't know, Yuri. The inner mechanisms of my mind are an enigma. Silence. <laughs> Anyways, please continue. Ah, uh, yeah. As I was saying previously, you shouldn't be afraid to let more of your Dare, daring with your work. When I'm writing down your thoughts, write down what you can see and hear. That sounds like a good exercise, Yuri. Maybe I'll try it out. I have an example of that. If you'd maybe want to... I'd love to read it. Yuri smiles dreamily and hands me a poem. Raccoon. Okay, that's the normal one. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. Even when it's dead, but I don't have a slightest clear what this poem is supposed to mean. That's right. It's very close to my preferred rhyme style. Use my poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and convey emotions through them. Do I see extra text? No, I, th I thought I did. Hang on, wait, did I? A bit close, but okay, no. Yeah, if it's supposed to face value, then, it can f it, then I can't even feel what it's supposed to mean. Well, I fear something about different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the ways I feel for me to indulge in any more on my unusual hobbies. If those sorts of things are usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But because they're embarrassing. People would make fun of me. Do you really think that, Yuri? Yuri nods slowly. Well, I suppose I can't speak for him, but I want you to know that no matter how strange your hobbies may be, I will never judge you based off them. You don't really mean that. Of course I do. Everyone has their own weird hobbies that I may not want to share. Plus, it's not like you did anything dangerous, right? Right? I mean, I may not have uh, guilty pleasures, I'm embarrassed, but okay. But everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and an individual English. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be rant a little bit now. But I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, idiot. But that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I could feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I always feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling, and you're to the thanks for that. Try to have the fact that I'm starting to blush. Alright, we're going to end... It, it's nothing really. Okay, now we're going to end the video here. So guys, I think this mod's going pretty well. Like, we, we're we starting to get close to Yuri. We we could have nearly kissed. We're going to share the chocolate. It was half in my lips. Would have been half in hers. Uh, you, you, I guess you could call that kiss in some way. I, I, I guess you could. I don't know. If you liked this, ah, 
Okay, I forgot to mention, guys, if you want to download this mod for yourself, it's the second link in the description. If you want to join my Discord server, that's the first link. If you want to join the creator of this mod's Discord server to find out more about the mod, and you want to just chat to, like, us, and, like, if you just want to chat to the commu community of the mod, well, that will be the third link in the description. And if you guys liked this video, smash that like button where it hurts. Also, smash the subscribe button too, if you're new here. Also, turn on post notifications to get notified when I upload and when I stream. And I'll see all you amazing people in the next video. Bye-bye.